Okay, so we're busy with the chapter on diagonalization, and it's indeed the section there on diagonalization, and we've done some examples of 2 by 2 matrices, and now I'm going to do an example of a 3 by 3 matrix of diagonalizing, or trying to diagonalize at least, a 3 by 3 matrix. So, where were we? Here. Okay, so you want to diagonalize this matrix. Okay. So, they say, they get this for the characteristic equation, so let's, let's work that out for ourselves. So, you know, go away and do it, and pause the video and do it, and come back and see if and if you have trouble, then just look what I've done. Okay, so we have these minus lambdas on the diagonal. Okay. And then now we can do cartridge juice. So what can we do? We can do... How to do this? Ah, we could do row 2 minus row 1, right? For example. Should I do that? Yeah, let me do that. Mm, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do column 1 minus column 2. Okay. So then I will get column 1 will become 9 minus lambda minus 1, so that's 8 minus lambda. Then 1 minus 9 minus lambda, so that would be lambda minus 8 and 0. And then we still have 1, 9 minus lambda, 1, 1, 1, 9 minus lambda. Okay. So now you can factorize out 8 minus lambda from the first column, and you have 1 minus 1, 0, and then 1, 9 minus lambda, 1, 1, 1. 9 minus lambda. Okay. Now what can we do? We could do... Uh, we could do... We could add to row 2, row 1. Okay. So then we're going to get this. This is 8 minus lambda factor. And we also have... We have 1, 1, 1. And now we have 0. So we have... Now we have 10 minus lambda and then 2, and then 0, 1, 9 minus lambda. Okay, so now we could expand down the first column, and we'll have 8 minus lambda, then just what remains is 10 minus lambda, 1, 2, 9 minus lambda. Okay. Can this be simplified? If you add, what, you can change that, become a 2, become a 2, if we, okay, let's, yeah, I think we can simplify this, we can go, um, what's a nice one to do, we could do, oh, let's do column 1 minus column 2, okay, so we're going to get 8 minus lambda there, and then here we get, 10 minus 2 is 8, so we have 8 minus lambda, that's the 2, then 1 minus 9, so we have minus 8 plus lambda, or can also write that as lambda minus 8. And then here we have still have a 9 minus lambda. Okay, so you can factorize out another 8 minus lambda. See, and now you have 8 minus lambda squared, the front, and you have 1, 1, 2, 9 minus lambda. Okay, now you can do subtract row 1 from row 2. You get 8 minus lambda squared there, and now you have 1, 0, and you have 2. Now 9 minus lambda minus 2 is going to be 7 minus lambda. And now it's a, it's a uh, upper triangular matrix, so the determinant is just the diagonal, multiplying things on the diagonal, so we have 8 minus lambda squared 7 minus lambda. Is that what they got? They got 8 minus lambda, no, they got lambda minus 11. Uh, so, we need to try and fix this. Where did the mistake come in? Um... It'd be nice if this was this 9 and this 2 came to the 11, right? They were added, but you don't. You're you minusing them. Ah, here's the mistake. This is not 1. 
this is minus one. When we factorize out, sorry, when we factorize out the eight minus lambda from there, this becomes, and from there, this becomes one, this becomes minus one, because it's lambda minus eight, not eight minus lambda there. So we have minus one there. So this step should not be row two minus row one. It should rather be row two plus row one. Okay, so then this becomes actually, instead of becoming nine minus lambda, it becomes 11 minus lambda. And that's then 11 minus lambda. So now we do have what they have, right? Yes, eight and 11 are the eigenvalues. Eight with multiplicity two. Okay. Now we find the corresponding eigenvectors. Okay, so let me clear out this working so you have some more space to work. Okay, so go away and do that. Go and find the eigenvectors. Wait before you do, sorry. The first first of all, we would the first thing to do is to solve find the eigenvectors for eight, because this this one with multiplicity, multiplicity, multiplicity two, that's the one that will determine whether or not this is diagonalizable. So we want we want if, for to be diagonalizable. We want we want to see whether this has this eigenvalue also has geometric multiplicity two. This one is not. This one doesn't affect the diagonalizability of it. Okay. So I I don't know why they did lambda one first. You'd always generally you'd always do lambda two first. So let's do lambda two. Okay. So. You've got to write down the, the eigenvalue equation. So we have the, uh, the eigenvalue we're using is 8. So we have 9 minus 8, which is 1. And then you have 1, 1. Then 1, 9 minus 8, 1. 1, 1, 9 minus 8, 1. OK, that's the eigen. That's the equation we're looking at. And so the eigenvectors for that. Uh, so let's do row 2 minus row 1, row 3 minus row 1. So of course you get 1, 1, 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So you have two free variables because there's only one pivot. So V could be, it could be, you can have this being 1, or you could have this being 1, and that then 1 being 0, and then this term is the negative of that. Okay. Is that what they have? Minus 1, 1, 0, and minus 1, 0, 1, yes. Okay. Of course, you could have any multiples of these. OK, so that means this thing is going to be diagonalizable because it has two linear independent eigenvectors. Well, because the geometric multiplicity of lambda 2 is, is 2, because it has two linear independent eigenvectors for this eigenvalue. And we know that this eigenvalue will be independent of this, right? Remember, there's that theorem that if things, if eigenvectors have different eigenvalues, then they're independent, no matter how many they are. OK, so let's find the eigenvalue for, sorry, the eigenvector for 11, okay? So write down the eigenvector equation. So you have 9 minus 11, that's going to be minus 2, 1, 1, 1 minus 2, 1, 1, 1 minus 2 times eigenvector equals the zero vector. So we could do, how can we solve this thing? We could do what? Um... Let's see. We could do row 1 plus 2 times row 2. We could do, mm, yeah, row 1 plus 2 times row 2. And we could do row 3 minus row 2. Okay. So then you're going to get 0. And then 1 minus 4 is minus 3. And then 1 plus 2 is 3, and then here we have, we left that row the same, and the bottom row, row 3 minus row 2, is 0, and then 1 minus minus 2, so 1 plus 2 is 3, and then we have minus 2 minus 1, so we have minus 3, okay. You could now do row 3 minus row 1 to 0 that row, and you could also do row 1 divided by minus 3 to make that have 1s in it. So you're going to have 0, 1, minus 1, times 3 equals 0. Uh, then this second row, we're leaving it the same for now. And this third row is 
no all zeros. Okay. Then you could do so you could swap row one and row two now. Okay, so you're gonna have one, minus two, one, zero, one, minus one, zero, 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 v equals zero. Okay, so now we've got these two pivots. We want things above the pivot to be zero. So let's do row one plus two times row two. So you get one, zero, uh, one minus two is minus one. I have zero, one minus one, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so we've got one free variable, as we'd expect, because we could only have a geometric multiplicity of one, because this is an eigenvalue with, with algebraic multiplicity one. And so, V could be any multiple of, um, so that second row is saying that, you know, so you, three variables, three variables in the third row, and the second row is saying that the that the second row equals the third row, and that and the first row is saying that the first row equals the third row, so one, one, one. Yep, that's indeed what they got. Okay, so we've got all the eigenvectors. Let me clear this again, so we still have more space to carry on working this out. Okay, so we've got these three eigenvectors now, one, 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 and corresponding to the eigenvalue of 11, and minus one, one, zero, and minus one, zero, one, corresponding to the eigenvalue of eight. So you put them in your matrix P, and you put the Ds in the same order, right? Eight, eight, because that's these two are for the eights. This one is the 11, okay? And then let's check that this really does work out like this. So we're wanting to check that this equation, that P inverse AP does equal D, okay? This really has worked out like it should. Okay, so we want to, first of all, we want to get, ooh, sorry. So as it's, sorry. So it does say that this is a tedious calculation. Let's just do it anyway. So we want to invert P, right? So um, let's do that the sensible way. The sensible way is you want to invert P. Basically, you want to find this P inverse in this equation, right? So I want to solve this equation. So this equation is like this. This is our P. Um, now this is our P inverse here. And then identity is that. So now we're going to Gauss reduce to make P become an identity matrix, basically. So we could start off with row 2 plus row 1, and also times row 1 by negative 1. So your top row will become 1, 1, minus 1. And then you'll have 0, minus 1, 2. We have 0, 1, 1 there. Times P inverse equals, so minus row 1, minus 1, 0, 0, and row 2 plus row 1. So you get 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, now we could do, we could do, row 3 could become row 3 plus row 2, and row 2 could be times by a negative. And you know what? At the same time, let's also do row 1. Oops, let's do row 1 plus row 2. Okay? So, then we are going to get... So, first of all, we're doing row 1 plus row 2. Yes. So, we're going to get 1, 0, 1 there. So row 1 plus row 2 in the other side, we're going to get 0, 1, 0. Then we're doing row 2 is being times by negative. So you're getting 0, 1, minus 2. And we're getting minus 1, minus 1, 0. And then we have row 3 is becoming row 3 plus row 2. So we're going to get 0, 0, and then 1 plus 2 is 3. And here we're going to get 1, 1, Okay. Okay. Now, oh, sorry. Now, what should we do? We could do. Uh, 
Row 3 divided by 3. Okay, and we could do, well, let's, just, let's just do that for now. So we're going to get 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, minus 2, 1, 0, 1, times P inverse equals, so row 3 divided by 3, you're going to get a third, a third, a third. Then you have the same things here. Okay, now you can do row 2 plus 2 times row 3, and row 1 becoming row 1 minus row 3, okay? That's going to turn this matrix into the identity matrix. So it just is identity, so you just have P inverse there on that side. And on the right-hand side, you have... So row 1 minus row 3, so you have minus a third, then two-thirds, and then minus a third. Row 2 plus 2 times row 3, so you have minus 1 plus 2 thirds, so that's minus a third. Then we have minus 1 plus 2 thirds again, that's minus a third. And then we have 0 plus 2 thirds, so that's 2 thirds. And then we have, at the bottom we have a third, a third, a third. So, hmm, do you know what? This was a silly way of doing it, getting these fractions. Let me go back and fix and do that in a nicer way from the point where I introduce fractions wrong, with a measure and I should, really shouldn't have. What I should do rather, oh, what happened here? What happened, where did it go? What I should do rather is this. At this stage here, I got this, uh, this three in this last row, okay? Let me rather Yeah, let me rather times the other rows by 3. So I'm going to go 3 times row 2, and I'm going to go 3 times row 1, okay? So I'm going to get 3, 0, 3, 0, 3, minus 6, 0, 0, 3, okay? P inverse equals, and then I'll times these rows by 3 as well, 0, 3, 0, minus 3, minus 3, 0, 3, oh, not 3, not saying that last row by 3, that's still 1, 1, 1, 1, okay? Now I do the, the things that I previously did with fractions. So we could do, we must do, we can do, should do row 2, should become row 2 plus 2 times row 3. And row 1, become row 1 minus row 3. Okay, so then we would get, what, 3, 0, 3, you get 3, 0, 0. 0, 3 minus 6, you're going to get 0, 3, 0. And here you get 0, 0, 3. Times P inverse equals, and now here we should have what? Row 1, you minus row 3, so you get minus 1, 2, minus 1. And then row 2, you add 2 times row 3 to it, so you get, so minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1, minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1, then 0 plus 2 is 2, and then here we'll find out that is 1, 1, 1. Okay, now... This matrix on the left, this matrix which is the threes on the diagonal, that's actually three times the identity matrix, right? So uh, inverse equals that thing. But you don't need this identity, right? It's three times P inverse. So then you divide both sides by three. So that means that the inverse of P should be a third of minus one, minus one, one, two, minus one, one, minus one, two, one. Okay. That's the inverse of P. Uh, let me get rid of this stuff. Now we don't need it. Now we just want to multiply this inverse of P by A, then multiply that by P. I'm talking about multiplying on the right um, for some reason. I don't know why I'm talking about that. Okay, so let's do this multiplication. So we're going to have P inverse, so it's a third, oh, it's a third, minus one, minus one, one, two, minus one, two, minus one, one, minus one, two, one, so minus there, times by A, what was A? A was nine, one, 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 nine, one, 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 nine, and P was? Minus one, one zero, minus one zero one, one one one. Okay, let's do this multiplication. 
Okay, so these two things, multiply that, those by those. What do you get? You're going to get first, first entry. You're going to get minus 9 plus 1. It's minus 8. Minus 9 plus 1. Minus 8. Minus 9 plus 2. Minus 7. Uh, next row, minus 1 plus 9, 8. Minus 1 plus 1, 0. 1 plus 9 plus 1, 11. Next row, minus 1 plus 1, 0. Minus 1 plus 9, 8. 1 plus 1 plus 9, 11. Okay, so now with that, that's what those two are. Now you're multiplying it by this matrix, by the, this part of the inverse of P, then you can divide it by 3. So ignore the 1 over 3 for now. Uh, now do that times that gives us... Okay, so first row. 8, 8, first row is going to be first row times... First row times first column, we're going to have 8, what, 8 plus 16, 8, yeah, 8 plus 16, cool, 8 plus 16, which is uh, 24, but then remember that's going to be divided by a third to give us, and that will give us the eight we want. Yay. So this is looking promising so far. Okay, carrying on with the first row, first row, second column, you're going to get eight minus eight. Yay, that's zero. First row, third column, you're going to get seven. Oh dear. We're going to get, you're going to get seven. Oh no, you're going to get, you're going to get seven. Plus 22 minus 11. Right? 7 plus 22 minus 11. No, that's not right. Hmm. Oh, yeah. We would like to get 0. Uh, um, where did that... How did that go wrong? Um, so that 11 down there, where did that come from? 119 by 111. 1 plus 1 plus 9 is 11, yeah. Where did that 11 next 11 come from? 191, yes. Okay, where did that minus 7 come from? 911. Wait a second, why is that, why is this minus 7? That's 911 times 111. That's 11. Okay. So, it doesn't affect the first, those two entries we have already, because they didn't use the third column, but use the first column and second column. So now, first row, third column, you're going to get minus 11 plus 2 times 11 minus 11, which is 0. Yes. Now, second row, first column, you're going to get 8 minus 8, which is 0. Second row, um, second row, second column, you're going to get 8 plus 16, 24. Yay. Um, second row, third column, you're going to get minus 11, minus 11, plus 2 times 11, 0. Third column, third row, third row, first column, minus 8 plus 8, 0. Next one, minus 8 plus 8, 0. Next one, 11 times 3. 33, divide that by 3 to get the 11. Yes, we do indeed get the D. Okay, so we diagonalized this and we checked that it worked. And we should never do that again because it was very boring. Okay.